Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Apparently, there's been a bit of a shuffle around on the questions tonight. Oh, okay. But uh, first question. Yeah. Is going to be something that we've already talked about uh -huh. with Stevie Please yesterday. Moment, no, no, no. Oh. We've got Nadem here. We've got Ale here, and we've got Stevie Nickel here as well. But we wanted to bring up a picture that came up on the show yesterday. Okay. Of when you were. Uh, a young whippersnapper, shall oh, we say. Hello. With hey. Air United. Can't wait yes. to see this. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at the bomb there. <laughs> so, Stevie, oh, can you please share yes. more on the photo Dan shared yesterday? How old were you in the picture? And the person standing left, is the kit man or the coach? No, that's, that's uh, Huey McCulloch. He's a, he's a physio. Right, so Robbo was sure that was the case, ah, that it wouldn't be that. Yeah, yes. the, kit man, the kit man's no there. He does, yeah. he does have that air of authority about him there, doesn't he, the physio? So, the answer is neither. <laughs> neither. <laughs> kit man, the kit man is not there. So Craig could name you and one other player? Uh, a bit, uh, uh, Robert Corner? Yes. Yeah. See the, see the guy sat next to Robert? So Robert Corner is on the bottom, three rows from the left. The manager is sitting on the bottom row on the left, right? Uh -huh. The guy next to him is a guy called Jim McSherry. I told a story about a season ticket holder who, there was like a wee paddock at the side of the field, in front of the main stand. And there was a guy who, when Jimmy played down that side, used to scream at him and call him names and swear at him. And called, just, just berated him constantly. And we Jimmy had enough. So what he did was he found out where he lived, or where he worked because all his information was on the, because he was a season ticket holder. Mm. He found out where he worked, and Jimmy went to his work, walked down, went up the stairs, walked into his office, and, and just walked up to him and said, you ever mm. shout at me again, I'm gonna jump over that wall, and you're gonna, you're gonna know exactly what I'm all about. He says, so don't ever, and the guy's like, Oh, Jim, I didn't mean it. It was only, it was only, and he went, no, <laughs> don't ever do it again. Otherwise, I'll be back at your work and I'll be giving you a mouthful. And he walked out. <laughs> and never again. Never again. Oh, the guy was like, ah, well done, Jim. <laughs> well played, go on, Jim, well done. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question about the picture itself, uh, yeah. Stevie. Why is it taken on an angle? <laughs> why, is it not, why is it not from the front so that we actually see everybody? Huh? Talk to me. What makes you think I would know that? Well, because you you would be the guy to ask this question to. I don't think I can ask the question to anybody else, and huh? I cannot talk to Jimmy because he gets angry if anybody talks to Jimmy. I have no idea. Why you? I've, I've don't, never noticed that before. Uh, to be <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that head. Yeah. Yeah. How, old, how old again? Uh, I was either 18 or 19. Oh. I bet you Robbo would like some of that hair, wouldn't he? Ah, well, I would like <laughs> some of that hair. <laughs> <laughs> or need them. Need them. Hey. Bit of ginger. Hey, you love that. <laughs> nah, Bit of ginger. Could, could you pull it off, Stevie? If you let your hair grow, could you pull that off again? No, no. The Dracula bits. See the Dracula bits at yeah, the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're winning. They're, they're not coming back. <laughs> yeah, they're winning. The yeah. Yeah, Dracula, they're Dracula bits are winning. It's not quite a two and a three, is it? <laughs> no. It's funny, actually, because my son, when he gets a, a really short haircut, yeah. his is shaped like Eddie Monster. Yeah. <laughs> I've got Dracula and he's like Eddie Monster. <laughs> It'd be great at Halloween. Tell you what, I wouldn't have to get dressed up. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, what's the over or under for baffling refereeing decisions in the Premier League this weekend? Mm. Well, what should we set the bar at? Well, it's not a surprise anymore, we, is it? Should we set it at five? No, too high. Three? I'm going with two. I'm going with yeah, two. Yeah, we'll go with two. I'm going to say, okay. Definitely one. Now, ba baffling is a, is a word that we really need to address here. So know. it's like, throw your arms up. Are you yeah. serious? Okay, I'm going to say two. All right. I'm going to say one. One? Yeah. Nadem? I'm going to say, I'm going to take the over. I'm going to say four. I'm going to go wow. Four. Oh. Yeah. wow. All right. Mm. Goodness. Nice. When was the last time there was ever four? Wow. Ever. <laughs> See this Ever. weekend. It depends. It's your perception, isn't it? Yeah, what? Ask, the ref, ask the ref. We usually have about six topics, don't we? Yeah, but it's from all over the world, not Premier League. Mo a lot of it's from the Premier League. I saw it? Craig and Shaka got all excited about Ask the Ref. We're <laughs> 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 all worked up. Dan started the other hey. day. And if you're wondering where Mark Clattenburg is, which is nobody, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, we'll follow that one back up. So, four, no. 
One, two. Yeah, and, and let's not get Saka worked up too much. <laughs> no. Did the guys ever play against a young player and instantly know he was going to become a star? Mm. 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 Um, yes. And they started and kind of fell off a little bit. But I remember playing for England in the 21s and it was against Montenegro. And their captain was 16 years old and it was Stefan Jovetic. And he ended up having quite a significant career to a certain point before he had a few injuries. But yeah, I thought a 16 year old captain in under 21 side, this is probably going to be the guy. And for a little while, he certainly, he certainly was that, yeah. And sorry to hog it, one more. On, when I was under 15s, I got a chance to go and play or be in the squad with under 18s for the FA Youth Cup. And I just got a call from school. So I literally came from school and said, oh, we're going to go and play Everton. And there's this young guy who's supposed to be pretty good. That young guy was Wayne Rooney. And at 16 years of age, I watched him dominate all the under 18s. And then the next season, he was playing in the Premier League. And I think his career wasn't too bad overall. <laughs> Wow. Indeed, look at this guy, he's pretty good. And it was yeah. Wayne Rooney. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Anyone stand out for you? Um, playing a national tournament in Venezuela where I was representing my state and we're playing against a state where Juan Arango, who arguably is the best player in the history of our country. Uh, and I thought I was pretty good at whatever age it was. It must have been 13, 14. Man, this kid was something else with that left foot. Now. Even back then, at the level of arrogance, and ah, but you give me the ball, I'll, I'll resolve it for us. Don't you worry, we're gonna win this game. We ended up winning in penalties, but Juan Arango in that game was just running circles around us. I'm like, yeah, that guy's pretty good. That guy's pretty good. And <laughs> I, I, I didn't know who he was, and then we sort of kind of came back together at the national team level, and he had become a superstar, uh, our, the best player in the history of our country. I can't say anybody when I was playing because I was generally too busy concentrating on what I was doing. So coaching. But towards the end of my career though, I played against Liverpool reserves for Sheffield Wednesday reserves. And there was a little kid up front. I mean, he was a wee squeef. He was about five foot four. He was like that. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have an easy night tonight. Mm. And then <laughs> five minutes later, just after the kickoff, there's a ball played up to him. And I'm still standing like this. <laughs> Where's he gone? <laughs> he was gone. The ball was in the back of the net. And I was on the bus on the way home and thinking, I think it's time I pack this game, man. Yeah. I've got some wee, some wee squeef kid <laughs> running rings around me. I don't know what day of the week it is. I need to pack this in. And about three months later, he was playing in the World Cup for England. Michael Owen. I knew you were going to say <laughs> Michael Owen. <laughs> Nobody had, I had no idea who he was uh, until that night. Until after that night. How did you describe him? A wee squeef. A wee squeef. Squeef. <laughs> squeef. A wee squeef. A wee I don't squat. even know that. <laughs> you know, a wee squat. A little squat. <laughs> you just call it that. Yeah. Out the road, you. Yeah. <laughs> what is the most annoying question you've been asked by a journalist back when you were playing? Mm. Maiden's eyes are lighting I'll, up a I'll, little bit. I'll, get, I'll give you the worst one ever. Go on, Stevie. Are you going to resign? <laughs> Honestly. You want to stand up and go over and grab them by the throat. Are you going to resign? Right. Honestly. Well, so I had just scored a hat trick. Uh, I was playing with the LA Galaxy at the time. You know, you scored a hat trick. <laughs> hey, here we go. At the time, I was one Moreno in MLS. There was another Moreno in MLS, and that was Jaime Moreno, I mean, uh, who was, who doesn't, who, for those of you that do not know the name of Jaime Moreno, one of the best players that MLS has ever had, and a prolific goal scorer. Yeah. Historic player from Major League. And a former Borough player. Uh, okay, well, that too. In any case, so, uh, reporters, they huddle around me in the and in the locker room, you get that sort of access here in this country. And you're like, hey, hey, it's got to just score a hat trick, by the way. Mind you, against DC United, the team in which Jaime Moreno play. Okay. They show Jaime. I'm like, as soon as they said Jaime to me, I tuned down the rest of the question. I said, I think you got the wrong Moreno. Next question. And I, I mean, 
it was so like, it, it was such a slap in the face and such a reminder of even at your best, you're still nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, a, it's a sort of, and now, but it's a sort of motivation that you use for yourself. It's like, even at your best, you score three goals, you think they would get your name right. They didn't. Motivation to keep going. Oh, wow. Mm. Made him. Um, a couple, really. I don't like the questions when they'd be asking you, like, do you still think your manager's the right person for the job? We're like, well, yeah. Would you want to say? <laughs> but then the other one was... Um, <laughs> Playing under 21s again, we were getting ready for a tournament in the summer. We had a friendly against France who hadn't qualified for the tournament. So they sent out a younger age group and they destroyed us on the night, like destroyed us. And I was captain for the day, came into the press room afterwards and somebody said, what do you make of Frank Lampard when he says that he thinks young players get too much too soon? And this was me captain of the under 21s. And I'm like, <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this is like is this in relation to the game? Like, is this a bigger thing? And I'm obviously trying to say, like, not everyone's getting too much. You know, we work hard, so on and so forth. But then next thing, there's a story in the papers, war of words with Frank Lampard. Like, no, you just trapped me. And there's nothing I could say that would be the right answer in this situation. But I thought that was a very, very cunning question to send across. And I hated it. And I wish I remember the person who did it because I'll make sure to never ever listen to anything I've got to say again. Oh, so mean as well, <laughs> such a young player. Last mm. question. Oh. Mm. For all, which stadium had the best atmosphere that you played as a visitor at? Wembley. <sighs> at Wembley. Mm. Yeah, kind of beat up. Just the whole thing, scary. Just fantastic, just you can Hard to explain. Just, an, just the noise. The noise and the history of it kind of goes together. The noise makes you start thinking of the history when you're a kid watching cup finals and stuff. So, yeah, Wembley. Wembley Stadium. Uh, Monumental in Buenos Aires and playing against Argentina. It, no, it wasn't quite 1978 with all the uh, papers and, and the ticker tape. And ticker tape and all that. But it was similar to that and it was that sort of feeling. And in that game in particular, it was uh, Diego Armando Maradona's debut or, or first uh, game as a, as a manager of Argentina, official match as a manager of Argentina. And on the field, there was a young player by the name of Lionel Messi who apparently turned out to be pretty good as well. Uh, you, could have said him, you could have said him in that last question. Who's that? Remember the question about who turned out to be brilliant? Oh, uh, yeah, well. You said him. Yeah, I could, I could have. I think, he was already, already I, think, no, I think he was already established by then. Yeah. <laughs> we already yeah. knew he was good. Uh, well, in any case, Maradona just being there created an environment in that stadium that was just... Even as a player, you, you, I had a good seat on the bench for a long period of time. And then we were, I think we were losing 3-0 or 4-0, and then the coach that put me out there for the last 30 minutes or so, and I'm like, all right, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> but um, just the environment, and, and, and you see in the, the ticker tape, and, all, and it, it kind of takes you back to the 1978, and, and you think of Mario Kempes, and Mario Kempes works with us here at ESPN, so it's a... Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it, and that, yeah, there was a lot of emotion there, and and you could you could sense the connection between the people and Maradona. Nadem. Yeah, I won't go for necessarily the best, but I'll say the most hostile. And it's when I was on loan at Sunderland, and we travelled to St James's Park for that derby. And yeah, they let us know that they didn't like us there, and we lost five one. So yeah, so it's certainly an atmosphere that I'll never forget. Oh, well, that will do it for the latest edition right. of Extra Time. Thank you're you okay. so much. You're yeah, right. you're I'm no, sad I'm I could go on. Loads of questions, we just can't get through them all. Oh. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll give it another shot. Oh, all right. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.